Hello everyone. Hi, it's Reverend Lunch Lady, also known as Love Coach Macy, and I am the founder, the creator of Big Happy Love, which is a coaching for single women that want to create a meaningful relationship and have struggled to get there. So I offer the healing tools and strategies to move from single to totally in love. And this week, I thought it would be really fun to share with you the five dating strategies that lead to love. And basically, these are commitments that you can make to yourself so that you um, are actually in the basically the consciousness that does create and allow for love to come in. So if you're joining, notice that in the subject, it asks you to click a link so that you can um, comment and your comments will be seen if you comment. Um, otherwise, I won't know who you are. But if you're joining, share who you are and where you're from. I'd love to see who's here. And um, really, I want to be able to share with you these five dating strategies because this is the kind of thing that I noticed for me took me from just kind of winging it in dating and feeling like I was wasting a lot of time to actually feeling on purpose and changing the way that um, my attraction was working. And it really made a huge difference. So the first one that we're gonna talk about today is all about actually making that decision, that decision that, yes, I would love to have someone to share my life with. If you're in a place where maybe your heart is saying that, but your mind is saying, no, you can't have it. No, you're not worthy. No, there's none left or, oh, you're too old. You're too this or whatever it is. Then that's not actually just like owning the choice. That's letting the inner critics just kind of talk you out of it. So this is about actually acknowledging what it is you want to create and being that champion for that. That one that says, you know what, I'm having this. I am deciding I'm making this um, a priority for me and no longer, you know, diminishing it with any sort of level of uh, limitations, all of the ways that we think we can't have it. If you think you can't have something, then you can't have something. So you know, this first step actually does take some nurturing because I know for me, I had a little bit of a fear of actually saying, oh, I really want this and then thinking, okay, well, if I don't get it, then I'm going to feel like such a failure. Or if I don't get it, then truly there is something wrong with me. And um, so there was a lot of kind of pain with even taking that risk of, you know, fully asking for what I desired. So what it looked like, too, was that then I was bringing a lot of my attention to, you know, my work, developing my career, making money, buying houses, doing things that were then making relationship more of a, what I call a back burner game. I was leaving that to default. Like, well, if it happens, it happens. Oh, well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And so it was kind of like half-assing it, really. Like, not really committing to doing something about it. Not really willing to um, put the consciousness into really connecting to, okay, what is it that I would really love to create? And when you do that, when you switch it, then it's like you've taken a step forward saying, you know what? 
I'm having this. I choose this. I desire it. And being able to experience that feeling of, you know, I am not wavering at all on this. This is what I truly want to create in my life. So that first step of, you know, making that decision to say yes to your love story and not um, letting anything get in the way of that, you know, can take a little bit of um, grit, really. Because as soon as you say you want something that actually is one of those things that has that risk to it, it's, you know, love does come with risk, you know, putting yourself out there, of course, yes, you could get hurt. And yet the reward of creating a meaningful relationship is so great. But if we are operating out of you know, the fear, then um, it is going to be hard to really do that first step. So I recommend if you notice that there's a, there are a lot of inner critics, if you notice you have a lot of fear, if you are aware of actually, you know, still having pain from your past, like those heart wounds or heart broken feelings or, or trauma, from a past relationship that it is going to be super important that you get the support you need to get to the bottom of that because those fears insecurities you know ptsd and trauma from relationships that didn't work out will always be the what what wins i mean you your body and being will always avoid pain over, you know, putting yourself out there, because, you know, that's, that emotional memory is held in your body. So even if your mind is saying, yeah, I I would love to share my life with someone, if you're noticing that one, it never happens, or two, you know, there's always kind of reasons why you you don't really want, you don't want to date or put yourself out there, or you just know that you're afraid of it, then that would be an important place to start. So, you know, get the healing tools and support to release any of those fears or limitations that even keep you from saying, I choose love. And If you want support with that, that is one of the things that I do. And I work with women all the time in using a really powerful tool called Regenerating Images and Memory, where we work with the subconscious. We actually use, I facilitate a process that accesses that that point of creation where all of the... um, the trauma, the relationship barriers started. And when you can change that piece of it and you can basically unplug the the triggers, the, the, the ways that we kind of block our heart or keep us from connecting and having intimacy with another, when we can get kind of underneath why it's important for you to have those barriers in the first place and actually change that in a very safe and powerful way, then you have a completely different space for creating greater love. And I see it all the time where people have come to me with no pattern over pattern, like, you know, maybe a pattern of attracting unavailable men or a pattern of, um, you know, feeling like men never actually stick around or men or women, whatever it is you're, you're interested in dating. It doesn't matter. It's like the relationship dynamic that is stored in our body will just keep repeating itself over and over again. 
So when you can change that, then you can start seeing a different kind of experience showing up. So there you go. This is step one. If you want to actually be able to do this without the fear, without the limitations, yet you know that those are coming up, then please reach out to me. Let's have a conversation about what you can do to change that because it's really worth it. Um, otherwise, step one in the dating strategies that lead you to love is actually choosing it, choosing it, making that decision, I'm going to have it and declaring that. And some of the practices that, you know, I found really helpful is, you know, being able to share what you're doing with other people. And that can be really vulnerable. And when you're able to kind of be in your confidence, in your safety, in your the security of you, then it's a lot easier to be able to say, you know what, I'm really excited about creating a relationship this year. And when you can declare it to the universe, declare it to yourself, and even possibly even share it with friends and people you know, then you're starting to be able to use that momentum of community to create something amazing for yourself. I know when, you know, my clients come in to work with me as part of my Love Muffin coaching group, you know, part of the reason why I created some group aspects along with the private coaching aspects are that being with other people and having that um, same declaration, that same decision that you're creating healthy, happy love, that is magnified. It's multiplied in that group. So, you know, I am here to support you in really being honest with yourself. What is it that you truly want? And if you've been the person that's just been sort of kind of undermining it because it's too scary to think, well, if I say I want it and then I don't get it, I'll be really disappointed. You know, oftentimes we're almost like rejecting ourselves before we even try. We're like, oh, I really want this relation, this kind of relationship in my life, but I'm not going to even try. It's like we're denying ourselves that that which is kind of stirring within us. It's not, you know, these desires are not made up. These are not just crazy ideas in your head. This is actually part of what is beautiful about being human and being able to connect with people. No matter what's happening in the world, we still get to connect and we still are designed to to love each other and and co-create together and really cheer another along and be cheered on and that's what i love so much about love coaching is that that is truly what happens is that you get to experience what it's like to be seen and adored and heard and celebrated exactly as you are. And when you get in the habit of doing that, you then be able to be even a greater voice for your own desires, whether it's in relationship or in your purpose or in your art or in anything that is coming through you because you have uniquely designed gifts and a very special love story ahead of you. And I would love to help you get there. So join me each day this week as we go through these five dating strategies that lead to real love, no matter what's happening in the world. And this first one is super simple, making the decision. And if there's anything keeping you from being able to really open up and declare that this is important to you, then that's an indication that you want to get some support to change that so that you can actually go from maybe this from guarded and you know 
having barriers to an open space of receiving. And I know so many people struggle with receiving, just receiving in this that, you know, this whole step includes a lot of aspects, including receiving and choosing and um, being super honest with yourself. So I hope this was helpful. Please share with me anything that you've just, you've, you know, noticed for yourself. And if you would like to do some of that inner work to change your space of receiving and allowing love to come in, please message me and we can have a conversation and talk about what it takes to transform that. And when you can, that's when real love shows up just like that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you really soon. Bye.